us. We've already found out how to find the length of the curve. Uh, we know that L was this. L was that, and you can get that simply by Pythagorean theorem, if you really think about it. Uh, the change in height here, from here to here. Remember, you can draw a little triangle. The change in height is simply f of x of k minus f of x of k minus 1. So we have this, and then you square it. Pythagorean theorem, square it. Square the height, square the length. This would be delta x squared. That's the change from x of k minus 1 to x of k, and then take a square root of it to find the leg. So Pythagorean theorem, leg squared plus leg squared is hypotenuse squared, subtract squared, subtract squared, and that's the L. The subtraction here is what's giving you delta x. So if we substitute all of this in, we have pi. R1 sub k is the same thing as that, and R2 sub k is the same thing as that. So we're doing our substitution. We've got R1 sub k, okay. R1 sub k plus times all of L sub K. We have pi, pi, R1, R1, R2, R2, L, L. square. Now this is all well and good, but we can't do anything with this unless we deal with this part, and unless we deal with this part. So we're going to look at this part right now. This is kind of a reaffirmation that we actually can find length. So basically what we realize is that this, by the uh, intermediate, by the mean value theorem, we can find a point within this. Re refresh your last me uh, refresh your memory with the last video. If you weren't able to find the length, if you haven't watched that yet, please watch that, how to find the length of the curve. Because what this is, by the mean value theorem, says if I manipulate this and have the slope between two points, I can find a certain point, xk dot, which is between x of k and x of k minus 1, for which the slope of the function is equal to the slope between the two points. In other words, the derivative at xk dot equals the slope between two points. So what this translates to is That's it. And that, if you'll remember this. This is the length from last time, or from section uh, 5 point, the earlier in the section. So we'll factor out again.
Notice that that's a square root of two things that are being multiplied together. We can split up those products. So we'll take the square root of this, leave it. We'll take the square root of this, that'll be delta x sub k. Done. Now I'll be a little, a little sneaky here. What I'm going to do is think about just this piece for a second. Now just this piece, I'm going to manipulate it. I'm going to multiply by 2 and by 1 half. Now when you think about that, 2 times 1 half gives you 1. So I'm really only multiplying by 1, but I'm doing it a very special way. Now what is this? Ignore the two. Look at the one half, this. If you add two things together and divide by two, you get the thing that's right in the middle of it. What you get is the average. So basically what we're having here is the average of the heights, the average of them. Now what I'm going to do is let another arbitrary point, we have an xk dot already, I'm going to choose xk dot dot to be that, I know it's weird, and that other arbitrary point. So I'm going to say there's some point, I'll explain it. There is some point xk dot dot. On this interval, for which f of xk double dot equals one half, equals the average basically, the average height. Here's what it says in English. It says, if x is within some interval and k is between f of a, b and f of a and f is continuous, f of x has to equal k at some point x. Um, in other words, it says intermediate value theorem. Basically says this thing, this is what I'm using in English. It says, hey, pick a point between here, between here. Pick some point between there. Call it x. We're calling it x k dot dot. So maybe we'll put the dot. It says, if f is continuous, then there must be some point and it must be between here, so that when I plug this into my function, it gives me exactly this height. Let me show you. It says there's going to be some point. I think I put the x dot in the wrong, wrong place. There's going to be some point, x sub dot dot, for which you can find the average. Look what we've done. We've taken the average of f of a and f of b. That's the height right in the middle of it. That's actually exactly what this is right here. That's the average height. Average height. 
we're saying that if this is continuous, then there is some point that you can plug in that's going to give you the average height. Let me say that again. This is the average height. Average height. There must be some point, since f is continuous, so that I plug in that point between a and b, and it gives me out the average height. It says this is going to be there. We're calling it x dot dot. Hopefully you understood that. If you didn't, I'll go back and watch it again, I hope. Um, this is just average height. It's continuous. There's got to be a point that I can plug in that gives me average height. There's got to be a point that I can plug in that gives me average height. So that's what that says. It says that there's some point that I can plug in. It's between here, and when I plug it in, it gives me the average height because f is continuous. It has to happen. So I'm going to let this become 2. times f of xk dot dot. So let's see, we're almost done. We have now a 2, a pi, a 2, f of xk dot dot. That's all this. Times, we already had the length. times delta x, delta x is now outside of our square root. Remember, we took the square root of the delta xk dot times delta xk squared. <clears throat> so pretty close to done. Uh, we'll make this a little bit prettier here. Notice that this is just the approximation for one of them, just for, for the kth frustrum. Now, in order to get all of them, we're going to add them together. So this was one of them. That's one individual frustrum. To find all of them added together, add them all up. Now, that's an approximation right now. To make it exact, we want to say, no, 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 there's not just a finite number n. There's an infinite number, an infinite number of these frustra. That means that all of those xk minus 1 xk is going to get smashed together. Everything's going to get super, 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 super close. So it's not going to make a difference that we chose arbitrary points within there. It's not. <clears throat> if we take a limit as n goes to infinity, right now we see an integral. We say that the surface area equals this becomes an integral from where you start to where you stop. 2 pi constant f of xk double dot f of x times square root 1 plus f prime of x squared delta x dx. 